Hey, everybody, and uh, welcome to the Lens Studio Twitch stream um, for the month of June, right? June, yeah. yes. Okay. So I'm Travis, um, uh, and this is... I'm here. Awesome. Um, yeah, so today we're going to walk through um, kind of a common request that we get on the forum, common question, which is kind of how to attach something not to the head, but right below the head. So examples of that would be necklace, necktie, um, bow tie, kind of anything in the neck shoulder range. Um, the kind of obvious thing a lot of people do is um, attach it to the head. Um, but the, the question we get a lot is, I've attached it to the head, but it's, it's sort of rotating with my head, right? Um, and so um, we're going to show you um, a couple ways that you can mm -hmm. fix that and then also kind of do something even weirder with that, that kind of lesson. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, that's kind of what we're going to cover today. But first, right? Yes. Okay. So uh, I think a couple of streams ago, we, we were asked um, to create a Lens Studio wallpaper mm -hmm. for official Lens creators. Um, official Lens creators are a group of creators um, that are kind of uh, work with Snap, um, and we, we really love their work. And so um, we, we have made said wallpaper. Yes. Uh, so reveal, drum roll for Ooh. the official Lens creators. <laughs> <laughs> So really simple, kind of minimal wallpaper, but um, you know, uh, wanted to give that to you guys since you asked for it on the stream. Um, we'll send that to all the official lens creators. Um, also, for on the stream and you know those watching on YouTube um, after the stream, um, if you have any like kind of questions of what is the official lens creator, how do I become one? Um, if you go to our website, uh, lensstudio.com or lensstudio.snapchat.com. There's this creator tab on the top. It's kind of third over. Um, here you'll see like a bunch of our official lens creators, um, all of whom are amazing people from all over the world. Um, and so you can kind of look at one, look at their work, um, contact them. If you go into one of their profiles, you can actually reach out to them. Um, if you want to, for example, work with them, collaborate, uh, maybe do a sponsored experience with them. Um, all of their information is kind of accessible through the, the Creators tab. Um, but if you're interested in becoming an official lens creator, uh, if you scroll all the way to the bottom, um, there's some information on kind of the official lens creator program and kind of um, some of the opportunities that, that, that it, it entails. Um, and then uh, probably most importantly, there's a button that says, I'm interested. If you click that, you can kind of fill out some details, fill out some of the lenses that you've made. Um, and um, um, let us know. And so, yeah, we'd love to hear from you, um, and especially if you're making like amazing lenses um, using Lens Studio, um, please reach out um, through that through that form, um, or through the form, obviously as well. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, with that, with the the wallpaper out of the <laughs> way, um, we'll dive into, I think, a couple projects, right, on um, kind of attaching things to the neck. Yes. So let's start with creating a new project. So hitting the new project and wait. OK, I'm going to close oops, full screen mine. And then what I'm going to do first is to import my head mesh that we created earlier. Uh, and after this stream, we're going to share this project file and the uh, head mesh and everything with you guys. Cool. So this, bit, this mesh is basically derived from the occluder that comes with Fun Studio. The difference is that we've kind of built in the neck and shoulders yeah. into this mesh as well. Mm -hmm. So the first thing to attach uh, the necklace to the head, I'm going to copy this uh, necklace and disable this object for now and keep the necklace for now. So the, uh, the there is so many ways to attach the face. So if you want to attach it to the anything to the face, you go to add new and search for head binding. And when you attach it to the head binding, you can see it's moving with the head. And if I position it even just like right here, you can see when I'm just like turning <laughs> my head. So like it looks great if you're kind of just looking straight and not moving. But yeah. as soon as you move, it looks mm -hmm. like it's kind of attached to your chin, mm -hmm. which it literally is. Yes. <laughs> um, and so um, this is like um, 
you know, uh, often where we get to the question, which is how do I attach it to my head, mm -hmm. but make it so it's not rotating with my head? Yes. So another way to do that is using a component called pin to mesh. So to do that, pin to mesh needs uh, like you can add it from like could select your necklace and add new component and search for pin to mesh. And pin to mesh always need the, to have a mesh to just like attach to, to be attached to something. So what I'm gonna do in under the head binding, I'm gonna create this sphere and make sure the position and everything is set to zero because the face occluder is already having some values that we don't wanna uh, work with those. So I'm just in here on the necklace, I'm gonna choose a target to the sphere that we just created and disable the sphere and enable the face occluder and let's make this a little bit bigger. Okay, now you can see it's not turning with my head. Let, let me change the offset to bring it a little bit down. So now you can see it's not turning, like the uh, rotation is not changing, but it's attached to my face. But as you can see, there is a problem with the occluder that it's not very working great in this situation. It's like the occluder and the necklace aren't in sync. They're yeah. like in two different worlds. Yeah, exactly. Um, so what pins and mesh is doing is basically taking the position and pinning it to that object, but only the position. You can see it yes. in Amir's pin to mesh component, orientation is set to only position. Mm -hmm. um, you can actually pin to the rotation as uh, well, which mm -hmm. position and direction. Yeah. But in this case, we're only pinning it to the position. Mm -hmm. But because the head occluder is kind of, is pinned to, uh, uh, or is rotating with the yeah. head, it's kind mm -hmm. of a little out of sync. Yes, exactly. So now we're going to show you to how to fix this problem, how to just like uh, make sure that the, hit, uh, the occluder and also the necklace behaving the same way. So what we're going to do, I'm just going to delete this for now and bring the head mesh back and we don't need that sphere. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to attach this to my head and disable the face occluder for now and try to position it and try to find the right scale for the head. So you can play in a 3D scene here and make sure to just like place it in a place. <laughs> Paul says, once in VR, would I skin a head to the bouncing chest bone? We will, we're actually gonna play around with that, Paul. <laughs> I think you're gonna enjoy the next one. Yeah. It's kind of <laughs> gonna be very similar. Yeah. Okay. So I think it's good for now. So, but the thing is, right now, as you can see, the... Same problem. Yeah, same problem. The chest is, like, the shoulder is moving, like, in a weird way. So what I needed to do is just, like, to say to my bones, like, to the root bone, I don't want any rotation to apply to my root bones. I just wanted to just, like, copy only the position of the head binding. Also for my head bone, I just wanted to have only the rotation, not position anymore, because we apply the position to the root. So to do that, we need to create a custom script to do that. So I'm gonna unparent this for now and do this by scripting. Can you can you just show really quickly mm -hmm. kind of how this rig works before you okay. script it? Yeah. So this is a rig that I have, and mm -hmm. this is a root that this thing should track our uh, head, head binding right, right, position. Right. And for the rotation, we don't want this thing to be rotate right. because that's a problem right. that we're having. We want the head head joint to be rotated as you can see yep. right now. Yep, so we want those shoulders to stay, Yeah. but the head should rotate. And so by basically having this rig model, we're able to kind of independently control those yes, two. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And then what's cool too is that occluder is now actually like deforming with those mm -hmm. movements. So yes. it's not just like pointed down, it's actually like bending the neck sort of like yeah. a neck would yeah. bend like mm -hmm. skin. Or just like sometimes you want to have a, like a shadow for your necklace and you can just like extend the mesh and just like mm -hmm. having the shadow to be just like be real time and right. just like drop on your skin. Right. So 
To create this script, you go to the resources panel, click on add new, and select this script. And when you double click on it, it's open it in the script editor. So to start scripting, I just need the reference to three things in my scene, three scene objects that I have. Like the first thing that I need is a head binding, and then my root bone, and then my head bone. So I'm going to have those reference here. So I'm going to need scene object for the head binding. And then I'm going to need to do the same thing with scene object for the head, for the root. And then I'm going to do the same thing, scene object for the head. So I'm going to, there is a new thing that I just learned. So you can just like drag this script and place it here and it creates a <laughs> new object. <laughs> 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 yeah. I did not know that. Yeah, this so is it creates this empty scene object with yeah. the script on it? Yeah. So you just have to drag it to an empty inspector yes, state? Yes, exactly. OK. So cool. Gonna call I'm, glad I, <laughs> I'm glad I'm here for the stream <laughs> to learn that. Uh, so we're going to uh, set these scene objects. So head and root and uh, head joint. So we have a reference to all three objects that we need. And now I need to get the uh, transform of each of the object that I have. To get the transform, I'm going to create a new var variable called like uh, binding transform mm -hmm. and get it from the binding object. Dot get and just to remind you for anybody scripting, I always forget this. Anytime you want to access one of the inputs, it's script dot whatever you named it. Yeah, exactly. So I'm going to do the same thing for all these root transform and script dot root dot get trans uh, transform. And all objects have a, uh, all scene objects have a transform on mm -hmm. them. Um, and so the transform kind of includes the position, the rotation, and yes. the scale of an object. And the get transform, um, once you have the transform, there's a lot of functions on get transform that are useful, like get local position, get world position. So you can kind of get those different values in different spaces. Mm -hmm. uh, and also, if you ever have any problem, like I always have the Lens Studio API page open here. Mm -hmm. And if I wanted to look for something, I just like search it here and just like it's going to just like show it to me. Like, for example, if I wanted to have like even like for uh, we're gonna add the update event, mm -hmm. so you can just like go here and search for the update event and just like add it to the to your script. All this script has a uh, example on it, so I'm gonna search for update. Like this is late update, but you can see just like everything has a example you here. You just copy that into yes. your script. Yes. So uh, what we need to do is to get a hundred followers apparently. Hundred followers? Wow! Wow! Coming, <laughs> coming on up this stream. <laughs> Thanks, guys. So we're gonna create the update function. Mm -hmm. So update even even. Okay. Uh, script dot create even and update. Did I spell it right? Mm -hmm. OK. And update event.bind to the function that we're going to just like create now to on update. OK. So now we're creating the function on update. And let's check if we create it, right? So to check everything, you can just like print it and just like check if the is printing every frame. Yeah, now you can see it's printing every frame. Okay, so we delete this. 
So what we we need right now is to get the like a position from the head binding and apply it to the root transform, and getting the rotation from the head binding and apply it to the head transform. Mm. So what I also need to have to have a first frame for the uh, like first frame position of the head uh, head transform. So what I'm gonna do is just like create a new variable and call it root origin position. And then from root transform, I'm getting get fourth position. In this way, I'm getting the first uh, f position of the first frame of the root right. uh, joint. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna do the same thing, but this time I'm gonna need the head origin rotation instead of position. And head transform dot get word rotation. As rotation. One two. No. Rotation. Okay. Cool. You have um this is like a VS code add-on, right? That tells yeah. you Yeah. Uh, so there's like a VS Code add-on. Do you know what it's called? It's like spelling or something. If you mm -hmm. just search spelling in VS Code's plugin, yeah. but it'll give you spell check on your script. Um, and what's cool is the spell check actually kind of, y can you show them like uh, yeah. spell rotation? It understands that you're programming. So it understands that your camel case uh, doing a variable name yeah. and that you spelt rotation wrong mm -hmm. and it'll underline it. Yeah, It's a really cool add-on. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now I want to uh, attach the head, head root joint to my head binding to do that. It's super simple to do that. I'm gonna get the position of the head binding every frame. So binding, uh, binding position, I'm gonna get the binding transform dot get forward position. Now I'm getting the position each frame for the head binding. Mm -hmm. And then for the final position, I'm gonna have the head binding position and add that to, to my uh, first, uh, first frame position, which is the root origin position. In that way, we can just like customize the face mesh on the first frame and just like make sure to just like, if you wanna just change the scale, change the position of the thing, it always attached to your face. I see. And then. <coughs> and just to clarify, this object should not be attached to the head binding. No. Because basically we're just using the head binding yes. to kind of get this reference point for position and rotation. Exactly. And then we're applying it to a model mm -hmm. not attached to head yes. binding. Because if you had it kind mm -hmm. of as a child, it would always be sort of overriding the position yeah. by being a yeah. child of yeah. that parent exactly. hierarchy. Yeah. So now we apply we apply that position that we just like created to uh, to the root transform set forward position here, and mm -hmm. we apply the position here. And now you can see the head binding is attached. Mm -hmm. To uh, the head is attached to head binding, and the problem that is that necklace is not attached because it's not under the root. I'm just gonna set it as a root, mm -hmm. and now it's here. So now I can see it's uh, the root bone is not aligned to my face. So I'm just gonna move it up and make sure that it's kind of aligned aligned to my face. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's not rotating now, which is yeah. which is good. It's mm -hmm. kind of what you wanted. Mm -hmm. um, because it is uh, it's taking the position, yeah. not the rotation. Yeah. So this at this point is basically exactly what we mm -hmm. did with the pin to mesh yeah, component. Yeah, exactly. And that line the, that I get the origin position was because I can customize it here and it's not overriding. Right. Like I can just like put it down and hit refresh right. and I can just like customize it. Mm -hmm. So it's always taking whatever you, yes. whatever you tune in the editor yeah. first mm -hmm. and then deriving from yeah. that. Right. So now my, I want the head to, my, uh, I want my head binding rotation to apply to the head bone. Like 
uh, I want it to be just like follow my head like this. And what's cool there is if if we can make that an occluder, as your neck moves, yeah. it'll actually occlude different parts of that necklace. Exactly. Which is what we want. Yeah. And to do that, it's almost the same thing. So we're gonna get binding rotation this time. Like in top, we got the position, but this time we're gonna get the binding rotation and binding transform mm -hmm. that get word rotation. Mm -hmm. And then this time for the rotation, I'm gonna have the binding rotation and multiply it to um, the first frame that I have here, head origin rotation. And then I can set it to the head transform rotation, head, head. And this is the head bone effectively. Yes. Right. Head transform dot uh, set word rotation and then rotation okay and now Ooh. that's cool yeah you can see it just like and the cool thing here too is like while the mirror is using like this model uh, we'll be setting it to an mm -hmm. occluder obviously um like if you wanted to make something that looked like a batman cowl yeah. or like uh, a, a scarf on like a Harry Potter like character, mm -hmm. um, you could just model your whole character oh, yeah. and then attach it. As long as you're following this kind of skeletal structure mm -hmm. um, based off the song, the head bones connected yeah. to the neck yeah. bone, uh, you're, you're, um, it's gonna work mm -hmm. like this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Actually, there's a cool, mi uh, cool lens that the uh, Warcraft has that has a, like a kind of hoodie oh, that cool. we have it on a snap camera. Oh, uh, right, right. I think you oh, can it's like yeah. a big, like, yeah. almost like red riding yeah. hood yeah, hood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like that red riding hood hood is bending mm -hmm. based off of the neck movement. So it's not just this like static thing attached to the head, it's actually moving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, sick. Okay, so I'm gonna change the color mm -hmm. to just like, okay, my. Yep. Gold necklace. Very nice. And then I'm gonna so create really <laughs> affordable <Yeah>. solution <laughs> yeah. to get that bling. <laughs> and then I, I just create the new occluder from the resources, click add and search for occluder. Occluder material. Yes. Right. And then I'm gonna apply it to my head mesh. And now you can see this is much better than it's the pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, is if you compare that to like what we were seeing with yeah. the pin to mm -hmm. mesh version, yeah. and then even compare that to the where we get the question mm -hmm. a lot, which is the just literally attach yeah. it to the head, yeah. it's like night and day. Yeah, to that, exactly. You know? And mm -hmm. if you just like go ahead and just like play with the scale of the head bone, it's gonna be completely fine. Right. But we're gonna just like we're not gonna do that, and we're gonna keep having fun with this thing that we created. So. Let's save it here, though, okay. because we should we should um, save this project okay. as like a separate. We'll share these projects back mm -hmm. to you. Um, this will be version one, where it's just the necklace attached to the head. Yes. So let's save the version two as well. Okay. And then what we're going to do is just like having, I, call, I can call it just like giraffe neck. Giraffe neck. Yeah. I'm going to create the giraffe neck. Lens. <laughs> Presenting <laughs> giraffe. <mix>. Yes. <laughs> okay. So what I'm gonna do is first make the make the line that it's make the root bone to follow the head binding. We're no longer following position. Yeah. Okay. And then. Oh, what happens? Oh, I see. Can you go back? Oh, I, you, so so the shoulders are like basically a yeah. No longer attached to your body. Yeah. There, they're attached. Yeah, and now they're not. They're not right now. <laughs> okay. And I'm just going to bring you a little bit down for now. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then what I'm going to do is instead of just like setting the root, pos uh, setting the position for the root, mm -hmm. I'm just going to set the, it's going to be the same thing, head transform, that's set word position. 
Oh, I see. So the thing that you are using to rotate the neck yeah. or the head yeah. on attached to the neck, mm -hmm. which is basically the bone system. Yeah. When you were at root, you were not dealing with the bone mm -hmm. system. You were yeah. just dealing at the top level yeah. object. Now we're dealing with the head bone. Exactly. Uh, and we're now taking that position. Yeah. Right. And I'm going to save this grip. And now you can see it's <laughs> kind of moving. <laughs> but the problem is my first frame. Like I'm still referring to the first frame of the root bone, mm -hmm. which we can just like create the same thing for the head origin position. Although let's stop here. Like we're doing giraffe neck, but we have a really pretty good pass at turtleneck yes. right now <laughs> where you can go into your shell. Oh, yeah. If you <laughs> <laughs> if you want to do some <laughs> some cool ninja turtle uh, inspired <laughs> lens. Oh, you can also create that. Uh, the what was the movie that came out of the TV? The scary movie. It was oh a ring God, the or ring, the, yeah, the girl yeah. out of TV. You there can you have go. a TV yeah, as a marker. Yeah, it like stretches out. Yeah, you can have a TV as a marker. Yeah, <laughs> this is like uh, also in um, Abyss. Uh -huh. uh, you remember the scene in the Abyss where the water is like bending oh, yeah, in the back yeah, yeah, around yeah. the corner? Yeah, the ring. The ring or Stranger uh, Things. Oh, yeah. We're unlocking <laughs> a lot of potential here. <laughs> so this time, get word position. And instead of just like adding to the root one, mm -hmm. we're going to add it to the head one. And offset I this a little. Yeah. Offset this to my head. Yippee. Kind of looks wobbly. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to remove the background for now. Kind of like this new we're getting We're getting more avant garde here. Yeah. This is a. Uh, and I created the animation today based on something that I found online. So I'm just going to import it as a 3D animation texture. So it's an animated sequence that I created in After Effects. Okay. So this is the animation. Cute. Yeah. And when you import that, it's asking you for resolution and everything. You just like hit OK and wait. OK, it takes some time to make that uh, asset for you. But while we waiting, so while we're waiting, I'm just going to add the, oh, well, I'm going to wait. <laughs> OK. It's building the yeah. uh, animation right now? Yeah. So right. what you can, also one thing that I wanted to show you guys, I don't know if you know that, this button here is really helpful. So sometimes like you have so many folders and you just like don't know where is just like your texture. You click on it and click on texture. You can see all the texture that you have or all the meshes you have or just like material. This is super helpful. I'm going to bring it back to here and select my head uh, material and click on base texture. Oh, this is cool also. And set my animation here. <laughs> OK. But this is not the thing that I want. So you can click uh, while selecting your material. You can check on the transform UV mm -hmm. and set your texture UV to transform UV. And then in here, you can just like click on screen UV. Now, when I do that, I can reveal the texture as well. Could you make it? I'm just curious. Could you make it where it doesn't have? Oh, you would just uncheck base texture. Uh, Wait, no, no, no. If it so it doesn't have this oh thing? Yeah, 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 this, this, this. Yeah, you just and like. Where's the pink coming from? Uh, my texture. Uh, oh, the pink's in your texture. Yeah, yeah. I see, I yeah. see. This is a texture right, that right, I'm right. having. Got yeah. it, got it. Yeah. That's so cool. I'm gonna bring back lighting, and then I'm gonna of course add post effects. Mm -hmm. I kind of like to add the uh, TV, uh, analog TV, since we're mm -hmm. fan of the ring the movie <laughs> and reduce the uh, distortion intensity. And the last thing that I'm going to do is add the screen image here. And I already created the texture called vignette. I'm going to bring it in and put it here and make sure it's stretch. Mm -hmm. 
and then reduce the alpha. Ooh, I'm happy with this. <laughs> it's very nice. Um, what is your thesis behind this art project? <laughs> I, I don't think know. It, re yeah. it represents humanity, how life sometimes gives you lemons. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the neck stretching re reflects. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. We'll yeah, figure it know. out. Yeah. Maybe next stream. Yeah, maybe, yeah. We'll, we'll present our thesis <laughs> papers. Um, cool. That's awesome. So, you know, I think there is like, the other just thing I really like about this example, I think there's so many things you can do with, with just kind of developing a rigs character and then using that moving positions around of mm -hmm. the bones. Yeah. And so, like, I think somebody, Paul might have mentioned that, like, he was playing with, like, having the chest bone move, bounce up and down. Like, mm -hmm. you could put, like, for example, a tween on that, oh, yeah. on that position, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it would have the neck bounce up and down. Yes. Or even, like, you could have a character where uh, your head is controlling an arm. Yeah. Like, it doesn't have to... Uh, apply to specifically this example, but this general idea of moving a bone within a rig programmatically or through attachment, through mm -hmm. head binding, or even object tracking, hand tracking. Um, you could make a lens that was like a puppet lens through yeah. this technique, yeah, where you exactly. attach your hands to to the, the puppet's hands. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, uh, my and also you can mix it with the puppet head as well. Like Ooh. you can have this and add the puppet head on. Add the, with the hands. Uh, uh, paper head on top, yeah, yeah. Paper head, yeah, yeah, yeah. I like it, yeah. I like it. Um, so uh, Mikhail asks, will the project be available? So yeah, we um, j pretty much always post um, the project after the stream. Yeah. Um, it usually takes us like maybe the night or in the morning mm -hmm. to get it up. Um, basically what we'll do is we'll clip the video on Twitch, um, but then um, for, the for the recorded stream, definitely head over to our YouTube channel, uh, it's YouTube slash Lens Studio, um, and there we have a subsection of the Twitch streams, and on the YouTube for each, each Twitch stream in the description, there's, um, I think, an actually submitted lens, right? Mm -hmm. Like a lens you can play yeah. with in mm -hmm. most cases, and then also the project, or in this case, we have two projects to yes. share back um with you um the other thing is um uh, i did want to mention um actually can you go to our github um well i'll just uh, just yeah. mention it um that we did um, create a template github um on a snapchat a github account um but the most important thing i think for you guys is we actually added a topic for lens studio so if you guys are kind of creating <laughs> github projects um in Git in some way um, for public kind of projects. Um, try to use that Lens Studio topic, and the hope is that more people use that for example projects, example code, um, projects you're wanting to share. We're doing that for the templates. We're talk topicking them for the templates. But what's really cool is you can click um, the Lens Studio topic, and it will take you to all projects that are related to Lens Studio. Mm. And so, if you guys are using GitHub, try to tag the projects. The other thing, the reason I mentioned that is we're actually working on, as well, putting um, some of these Twitch stream projects and some of the example projects mm -hmm. on a, a kind of GitHub as well, tagged with the Lens Studio topics. So probably in subsequent stream, we'll kind of share that with you all. But mm -hmm. it's something we're working on. Um, is, I'll just wait a, a minute or two if there's any additional questions. Um, what else can we do with neck stretching? Else. I think like you could do some really cool like giant World mm -hmm. of Warcraft shoulder pads. Yeah, yeah. Hey, it doesn't need <laughs> to be neck. It can be anything. Yeah, like we yeah, just yeah. like show the idea. Like it right. can be anything. Just kind of generally yeah. moving blench or moving Joints. joint based yeah. animation mm -hmm. around. Mm -hmm. Moving blend shapes around. That's that's probably a good topic for yeah. another stream. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it doesn't look like there's uh, many questions. The one thing I, I will say, um, too, um, in the future, uh, if you guys want to post on the forum or reply to the tweet about the Twitch stream, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> got too excited. <laughs> if there's any topics you guys <coughs> want us to cover or if you want to see a, a specific example project, mm -hmm. um, 
we're happy to like kind of um, try to try to do something related to what you guys want to see. So let us definitely let us know. Yeah. So I think my voice is officially <laughs> gone, which means we're done with the stream, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't have to talk for another month. <laughs> Put Travis back in the box. Okay, cool. Thanks so much, everybody. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye.